Hey guys, it's BaileyWiki, and we are going to do some more matte tutorials today. We're going to use the uh, Ruins release that just came out today. It is March 3rd, 2024. And if I zoom in here, keep an eye down here. Oh, and as I get closer, I see something peculiar about this wall, and I'm actually in player mode, and yet I can see a, um, you know, a hidden door that just showed up. If I click on it, I can go inside this hidden area. So what's going on? Well, let's let's use this as our first tutorial. Okay, I'm back in GM mode, and I want to show you how we configured this. So if I open this up, uh, you'll notice I've got it tags the secret door, although that's not necessary. Um, what I'm using here is percept. So this isn't actually a monk's active tile trigger, but we're going to use it here in a second to work with monk's active tiles. But this is just a really basic example. I've uh, opened up my wall, which is really a secret door, and I've gone to my perceptive tab. Perceptive is a module. It's free if you didn't know that. And you can look at a bunch of different options what we haven't used before is can be spotted so in this case i'm going to set it to yes i'm actually actually going to give it a dc because this will reset itself uh given the way that i have this set up I give it a very low dc um and it can have a passive or an active dc so if i wanted a player to roll a perception check and if they were close enough in this case within spotting range in this case 15 feet then it will um, spot the image or it'll, it'll spot the uh, the wall. It'll make it visible for that particular player. There are settings, by the way, that you can set to make it visible to all players. So it says something peculiar about this wall and it shows the player that there is a secret door there. So that's very simply how it works. And if we reset spotted by, come back over to our player, oh, of course we have to Make it a secret door again. Yeah, everything else works. Click the reset spotted by just to make sure. You see how it's outside of the range, but when we walk back into the range, that's when it uh, illuminates the door. So really cool, really helpful. Okay, so let's look at another example. Okay, so now I'm in a new scene. This is just another one another ruin and I've got this fireplace here and uh, but I, I don't see anything yet appearing so in this case I'm going to make an active perception check roll with advantage I got a 28 if I jump back over to my GM view you can see it's asking me to confirm that my player spotted something in this case it's going to show me that's going to reveal some levers so I'm going to go ahead and say yes and now on my player view this lever appears this time I can interact with it if I do that I end up on the other side of this this rotating fireplace click it again and I get on this side of it Okay, so what's happening here? All right, so let's look at what this tile has going on with it. First of all, it's tagged as fireplace, and it has only a right-click function, and we can allow anyone to right-click it, see the other settings. And uh, right-clicking it just allows the player to toggle the fireplace light on and off. However, there's a secret function, and it's this first function here. So first, what it will do is it will toggle the mount um, status of these players and it's under the writable uh, set of actions okay so we want to go with player tokens and we want to mount and by the way i'm not going with all tokens just because i'm using a control token in the middle of this this prefab and i didn't want that to get caught in it that'll cause an endless loop so i'm just saying player tokens and they're going to mount to this tile then i'm going to play the sound of this grinding sound right and then i'm going to rotate anything with the tag fireplace by 180 degrees. So I actually have this control token and I have this tile tagged as fireplace. I don't know why I needed to do both of them. Um, this control token is attached to the walls and everything else, but it seems to work better um, when I had both of them tagged as tile uh, as fireplace. Then I'm going to wait for one second I'm using the delay action. Wait for one second and then I'm going to unmount all of the tokens. Right. So I'm going to unmount the tokens within the tile. So any token that's in the tile will unmount. And then I'm going to wait for three seconds and stop that, that grinding sound that you heard. 
just to show you the other pieces here, there's some walls, there's some lights, there's an even ambient noise there, right? So I can right click and toggle everything on and off. And I also have this control token tag to Spire Place. And again, everything's connected to it. So I could like literally hold down the control key and turn that and it'll all turn manually. So let's also look at these. So I come in here and I go to uh, the perceptive tab. I'm going to call this fireplace lever and it can be spotted. So I'm going to tick that on. It's something that can be seen. And then once it's seen, it will be revealed to everybody when it's spotted. I could turn this off and only my player who spotted it will continue to see it. In this case, I'm going to turn off passive perception. They can't even passively see it at all. I'm going to give a really easy active perception. I'm going to give it a, a pretty broad range of, of 40 feet, right? So if they're standing even in the room, they'll be able to spot it. You can change these obviously around. I'm going to give it a message. You spotted a lever. And right now I'm just going to say reset spotted by. I'm going to hide these. And hiding them makes them spottable, right? So once they're hidden, they can be spotted. And that's, and that's it, right? So once they become perceived, once they become visible, then my players can interact with them. And then we go over here to the setup and once it's visible, it can be clicked, it will play the sound of a latch playing and it will trigger anything with the tag of fireplace on it. So now we've reset our vision. We're gonna go ahead and do another Perception check. You can see my perception's nice and high. Make sure we pass this check. Critical success. Uh, yes. And by the way, you can make this so that, you know, you can allow them or not. It's really nice uh, if you can allow that as a, as a GM. So now I've seen my, my trigger or my lever. I press it. Now I move over to the other side. Simple as that. By the way, this whole thing that you saw, this is available as a prefab. So this fireplace, this rotating fireplace, you can just drag it out and it's got all the components already ready for you to use it. You just need to make sure that your walls line up with whatever map that you just dropped it into, of course. Okay, so some of you have wanted to know how to use macros. In this case, uh, with this release, we, we made this cool little macro control. So let's say I wanted this you know, this map to not be, to have like, you know, this kind of background. So I've made the background tile uh, a special tile. It's It's got a, a specific tag called background. And when I click this, it opens up um, my file picker. And if I look for tileable or anything with tileable, and I'm using dig down from Ripper, it's a free module. It will search all of my installed modules. In this case, I have all the BaileyWiki modules for different kinds of background. And I can find a background that I like, select it, and it changes the background of my scene, okay? And then I can go in here again and select this one. I'm using Monk's Active Tiles for all this, by the way. And I can actually adjust this background so I can zoom it out in case I want the cracks to be like a little smaller. Um, you know, I can rotate it until I get it to just the right position that I want. I can even move it left and right and up and down. Cool, right? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, like I said, the background tile here has, it has a token magic effects filter applied to it. And so we made a special macro. And when I come in here and I go to triggers, I can see a GM can click that tile and it will run this macro. The macro is called TMFX or token magic effects terrain overlay with file picker tagger. And what that is, is that's looking for this macro in my, either in my compendiums or in my world. And I'm going to feed it an argument. In this case, the argument is background. And I'm going to run this as a GM. So let's open up that macro and see what it looks like. By the way, you can get this macro uh, in my nuts and bolts. So if you want to open it up and look at it yourself, just download my nuts and bolts free thing and it'll work. Okay, so here is the macro that it is firing. And the special thing that it's doing at the top is it's taking the argument that I gave it, in this case, the, the term background, and then it's sticking it into this spot right here. And it's saying, look for anything with the, the tag of background and then execute this 
this macro. I'm not going to walk you through how this macro was built. This actually was built by Zephyr. If you have questions, go hit up Zephyr on my team, on my Discord. Um, but it essentially then just looks for that macro anywhere on the scene and then it will execute it. And all it's really doing is it's opening up the file picker and going to a certain you know area of the of the folder structure it's going to look for an image and then it's going to end up applying that image uh, to the token magic effects filter so it's looking for this filter the sprite filter it's looking for the filter id base train and it's going to apply that uh, that image to uh, to that filter make sense so generally if you're going to use arguments you're going to use things like this at the top of your macro to actually um, have Monk's Active Tiles send those arguments through to the rest of the macro. This one's calling out something very similar, Matt targeted scrolling. Here's that one. And here's our argument to find that tag. And then based on that, it's going to select that tile and then launch that special navigation GUI that you saw. So how this all gets built, um, it's it's uh, wizardry to me. Again, ask Zephyr or Adif, who uh, who actually wrote the the kind of the beginning source of this macro and kind of made that uh, that interface that you saw there. Okay, last one, and this is a simple one. Here's just a snowy uh, ruin scene. And if I zero in on my user, you can see as they enter the, the ruin, they become cursed. Okay. And depending on what you have established for automation, right, that carries all of the automated or non-automated things that you need. So how do we do that? Let's just look at that really quick. This ruin is its own tile. So that's part of why this works this way. If I didn't have it as its own tile, I'd have to like use other invisible tiles and things like that to make it work. And that can get a little bit messy. But if you work with tile systems like mine, you can have the tiles themselves do fancy things. So if we click into it and go to triggers, uh, when we have two possible triggers, entering the tile and exiting the tile. Okay. Everything else you can see here. And then my landing for enter. So what you do is you, you create a new action and it's under the action flows, you pick landing. And in this case, if you just start typing enter, it'll give it to you as an option. And I'm gonna click update. And once I enter, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna say active effect. It's right up close to the top. The triggering token is going to get the effect of cursed. And in this case, I'm going to add that effect whenever they enter the tile, okay? Then I add the next landing. In this case, I wanna stop when I reach that in code, because I don't want my entering to then continue forward into this one. So this landing's gonna be the exit landing, stop when you reach, reach it in code, so it's like a stop sign. And then I'm going to go to the same thing, active effect, but this time the triggering token, the effect being cursed, in this case, I'm gonna remove the effect, okay? Notice you can also like clear all effects. Uh, you can toggle an effect on and off. So uh, keep that in mind as well. You may be different use cases for both of those, but that's how simple it is. And you can use that for all kinds of fun things. Like, you know, if you walk into an area that is super heated, right? And your players like all of a sudden get exhaustion from it. Or if, uh, you know, they have a minus penalty or something like that to hit. So, you know, whatever, whatever you end up uh, doing, it's just a really effective way to cause things to be cursed or not cursed. And you can always throw it on an active tile, just like a regular tile, like some of mine in my premium module, and you can just use those to trigger that effect, right? It's nice that you can have it trigger it and it's lasting, or you can have it trigger it and then, and then make it turn off when they leave an area. So pretty flexible in general, easy thing to use. So I hope that I hope that was helpful for you guys. I love Monk's Active Tiles. I love that it makes things interactable. And uh, you know, if you have questions for how I did any of these, let me know in the comments. Um, but it should be pretty straightforward. And let me know also in the comments what you'd like to see next. It's actually a YouTuber uh, commenter, Kinru Highwood, I believe, that had asked the question, hey, can you show me how to do 
uh, you know, secret doors and, you know, rotating walls and things like that. So uh, there's tons of ways to do secret doors and rotating walls. Let me know if you guys want me to hit up any specific use cases. Um, but yeah, I, we listen to these comments. And if you have something you like to see, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you guys had fun and have fun making your maps.